What's up YouTubitables? In this video I'm going to show you how to take the guts out of a pair of computer speakers and use that as a boost and two different kind of reverb. I'm going to show you examples of those after they've been built with sound demonstrations. Then we're going to go to the workbench we're going to put together a compressor circuit, let you see that, let you hear that. But then we'll do a little guitar practice amplifier and I'll show you how to change a few components to get the voice that you want out of that amplifier. Every bit of this will be accompanied with uh, easy to understand explanations and simple diagrams. I'll also talk a little bit about showing you how to get all the components you need to complete these circuits for free from old electronics using a fucking hammer. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned. Okay guys, when you rip open a set of computer speakers, what you're going to find in there basically is a wire coming in as an input, a stereo amplifier, and two speakers. There will usually be a headphone jack, and if you're lucky, there'll be a microphone input jack. So, in this video, when I reference these uh, diagrams, I'm going to use a guitar as a symbol for the sound source. This could be a guitar, a microphone, a laptop, keyboard, basically anything that makes noise and can be hooked up to the input of the small stereo amplifier. And for the audio receiver, I will just use a picture of a guitar amplifier. This could be a stereo receiver. This could be a audio interface, a computer, or it could be a guitar amplifier. So to use this little amp as a boost, you connect your sound source to the microphone input if you're lucky enough to have one. If not, you just use the wire coming into the amplifier. Then you just go from the headphone jack uh, to your receiver. And that could be used as a microphone preamp, or you can use it as a guitar boost pedal to push a clean amp into a saturation give a fatter sound and this is an example <laughs> Now before we continue, here is a bit of a disclaimer. With the last circuit, we hooked the headphone jack up to the amplifier, but speaker output is meant for a speaker. You can hook it up to a speaker, that's fine. But when you hook it up to an amplifier, the proper way to do this is with a step down transformer. For the circuits in this video, I'll be using this uh, audio transformer from a tube guitar amplifier. Well, you're probably saying, damn, I don't have one of those. Well, you can get one on eBay for about $15, or you could just take an AC adapter, uh, people call these a wall wart, and get a hammer. And inside, you'll find one of these, a step-down transformer. Now, let's talk about how to make a plate reverb. The first thing you're gonna need is a plate. It's basically just a big piece of metal. Could be a 600 pound sheet of steel, could be a cookie sheet. You'd use a square metal cut out of a car hood. Anything that when you hit it, it makes it sound like <laughs> Now you need to take the two speakers that you liberated from your set of computer monitors and uh, attach them to the plate. You could screw them or glue them. Doesn't really matter as long as they're secure. Then you want to freely hang the plate somehow. Like maybe put two holes in it and uh, hook strings or chains to it. The goal here is to let it move freely on its own. There are several ways to do this circuit, so here's the first one I'm going to talk about. It will be active mono plate reverb. You hook your sound source to the left channel input. Then you hook one of the speakers to the left channel output. So now if I played this guitar, it would cause this plate to vibrate. But you want to send the vibration to that amp, so you connect the other speaker to the right channel input, and it'll act as a microphone. Then you hook the right channel's output to the amplifier through a transformer. And now, in this configuration, the guitar's output will be amplified and sent into the speaker on the right, vibrate the plate, then that will be picked up by the speaker on the left, amplified again, and then sent to the receiver. Okay, so here's another way to do this. You may find this simpler and easier to build. This is passive plate reverb. You hook your sound source to both the left and right channels. Then you hook the left and right outputs directly to the speakers, just like factory configuration. Now you will need to attach a third speaker to the plate, and you can simply hook this straight to the receiver, no transformer needed. And for stereo reverb, you can take another receiver or a two channel receiver, place another speaker on the plate, and hook one to each. This configuration can even be used to turn a mono signal into a stereo signal. But with a two channel sound source, this will be a full stereo passive reverb. Here's an example of 
the active mono reverb that I built inside of a wooden cabinet with a plexiglass front. The plate is made from a piece of leftover roofing tin suspended from springs from a child's rocking horse. And here is an example of what it sounds like when hooked to a homemade synthesizer. I put that clip on Facebook a few years ago and several people told me they couldn't hear the reverb. Well here's the same synthesizer being controlled by the same sequencing keyboard without the reverb. Uh, yeah, sounds like a shitty Atari. Okay, so obviously this thing sounds great, but it's about half the size and weight of a refrigerator. If you don't have much space or you need something portable, you need a spring reverb. So, the first thing you'll need for this is a reverb tank. It's a metal box with two coils and two springs in it. You can get one of these on eBay for about maybe $20, or if you look up, you can get one out of a broken guitar amplifier. Now, I'm sure you can make one on your own by stretching a spring, maybe for a screen door, and then attaching a speaker cone to each end somehow, although I've never done this. It basically works like the active plate reverb, but just smaller. You're gonna hook your sound source to the left input, then hook the left output to the input on the reverb tank, then you're gonna hook the output of the reverb tank to the right input. Then from the right output to the receiver through a step down transformer. Here's the unit that I built and housed inside of a briefcase. And this is what it sounds like when used with a guitar amplifier. Okay, we're gonna rip the guts out of another set of computer speakers and put them on the workbench because it's time to build an optical compressor. Okay, for the testing phase, I'm just gonna use a speaker and the first thing we're gonna need to do is hook the sound source up to both channels. Then we'll hook the speaker up to the right channel. Let's see what we got here. Okay, now we need two white LEDs. What's that you say? You don't have any white LEDs? Well, I bet you've got an old flashlight and a fucking hammer. Now take those two white LEDs and hook them up to the left speaker output. If you've ever hooked an LED up to a speaker output before, you know what's about to happen. Okay. Okay, that looks cool, but it actually going to serve a purpose. Now we need a component called a light dependent resistor. You probably think there's no way in hell you're going to find one of these around the house, but it's just a light sensor. Your wife, daughter, little sister probably has a uh, automatic nightlight, or maybe you have one of these plugs that lights up so you can see it in the dark. Well, unplug it for safety and, and get the hammer. <laughs> Now we're going to connect this to the input. And in this configuration, it's basically going to act like a light control volume knob. I'll hook this up real quick and give you a demonstration. I'm sure you can see how this could be used to make a tremolo. It's also important that we block out the light. So, we'll take both of these components and wrap them in a piece of black tape. This creates another component that you can buy pre-made, known as a Vactrol. And now that they're connected, any soft sound will be able to go through just fine. But when a loud sound happens, the light will light up and then the light dependent resistor will ground out the input. So it's basically like you got a little guy in there with lightning fast reflexes listening through headphones to turn the volume down when it gets too loud and immediately turn it back up. Here's a demonstration of that. Okay, so this is a working compressor. This is the piece of equipment that is used to make that airy, whispery sound in pop music vocals or that banging EDM bass drum. Although, for this uh, circuit to work in any useful capacity, you're not gonna need it to come out of a speaker. So we get this step down transformer and run it to a receiver. In country music, they use it just like this diagram in between the guitar and the amplifier to give it that twangy, popping rubber band kind of sound. And here's an example of that. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's build a little guitar amplifier. I'm sure somebody out there is like, that's easy. You just take the computer speakers and you plug the guitar to it. Well, yeah, you can do that, but it don't rock and roll. For that, you need gain and clipping. And I'm sure you want to be able to change the tone in a way that you find desirable personally. So we're going to hook the guitar to the left channel. Then we're going to hook the speaker to the right channel. Now, to get gain, we need to loop these channels together so that the signal is amplified twice. But if you remember, you cannot hook a speaker output into an amplifier input. For that, you need a step-down transformer, right? Well, you can do this, but uh, the amount of gain that it takes away pretty much negates running it through both the channels, and uh, you just get the same amount of gain as you would with one channel at the end. So we need to use two wires and connect the ground together on those wires and use a device called a resistor. Where do you get a resistor? Well, you take your hammer and you look inside of any old electronics that you have uh, laying around and I'm sure you'll find it to be packed full of resistors. Now, if you look at it, it's got little stripes on it and those are a color code that let you know the value of the resistor. Higher resistance will let less signal through, so less gain and less resistance will let more signal through or more gain. You can use an internet decoder to uh, calculate the values from those stripes. Here's an example of what several of those values sound like. If you use too little of a value, you'll get feedback and oscillation. Okay, so obviously that works for an overdriven sound, but what if you want like a fuzz box sound? Well, you can use a capacitor to let some of the signal bleed past the resistor. A small capacitor will let the high pitch sounds through, and a larger capacitor will let the more bassier sounds through. And whatever piece of equipment that you use to get the resistors off of, it's probably covered in capacitors too. But here's an audio example of that. You can also use capacitors on the input to shape the tone of the guitar. Small capacitor for more high frequencies and larger capacitor for more low frequencies. But these won't cause it to fuzz out. You can also use an LED in between the positive and negative wires here in the middle to let some clipping happen. This is like an artificial overdrive and this is how uh, distortion boxes work. I wired two LEDs right in the middle for an over exaggerated example here. But the number one thing that will change the sound of your amplifier is the speakers. How many, how, how big, the efficiency, the ohms, the wattage, it all makes a big difference. So after messing around for a while, I chose a 75K resistor, these two 4 ohm speakers, a medium capacitor on the input, a blue LED for clipping, and I got the kind of a classic rock sound that I was going for. But of course you can experiment away on this and shape it to whatever your personal taste is. And as a bonus, you can remove the speaker, use the transformer, and hook this up to a receiver and use it as a dirt box or a distortion pedal. Well, that just about does it for this video. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, please give it a like and maybe subscribe. Till next time.